Let's go ahead and set up your machine to test your API in Docker. Docker gives you a way to create containers for testing software in any environment. In this course, you'll be using it to test your Kitura API in a Linux environment before pushing to the cloud. In this course, we are running on Mac OS 10.13, or High Sierra. This means you'll need to download Docker for Mac Community Edition. You'll be managing an Ubuntu container to run Swift on Linux. While this isn't a course on Docker, I do want to explain the bare minimum for what you need to know as you test your API in Linux. On your own time, I encourage you to go to docker.com and learn more about containers. One of my colleagues at IBM, John Zaccone, has a great free course about Docker that you can find at the link in the author notes. To download Docker for Mac, open up a web browser and go to this link. A disk image will download that you need to run once it's finished downloading. Go ahead and install Docker by dragging the Docker icon into the Applications folder. After you have everything up and running, open Terminal and run docker-version to make sure everything is linked up properly. Now let's navigate to the root directory of your server project. Take a look at the two Docker files you have prepared for you. The first one, called Dockerfile, is a manifest for running your application. The second one, called Dockerfile Tools, is a manifest for building your application. Let's open the first one in a text editor right now. Notice the very first line. At the time of this filming, you were using Swift version 4.1, so this line indicates which version of Swift to build in the Ubuntu container. Feel free to take a look through the rest of the file, which is simply a set of instructions for Docker to run in order to set up the container. Exit your text editor. Feel free to look at Docker file tools if you want as well. Once you're back in the root directory of your project, the first thing you need to do is build the images for each of your containers that build and run the project. Think of the images like the runtime environments that will work inside your containers. For reference, the four commands you need to type in order are in the readme.markdown document in this folder. Start with the first two. Notice that the content after the dash T, which stands for tag, is customized for this app. In theory, you can name these tags anything you want. I chose these names for you for the sake of consistency. Type docker image ls. Notice the new images and their names. You're now ready to move on. Enter the third command you need to compile your app in the build container. Let's look at each component of this command. The dash V stands for volume, which shows the disk volume you mount and compile inside your container. The dash W stands for working directory, which in this case is the same as your volume. Finally, the build release shows the command you pass to the Swift command line tool in your container, which will build the project in release mode. After this finishes, enter the fourth and final command. Let's look at each component of this command as well. The dash IT stands for Interactive Teletypewriter which means you can interact with your container using standard in if you'd like. 
The dash P is for which port is mapped from your container to your application. You're using 8080 to keep things simple because your application runs on that port as well. Finally, the rest of the options signify that you're running the release build of Emoji Journal using bash inside your container. After you run this command, you should see some logs for your server that it's running. Open a web browser and try opening the home page. And there you have it. You are now running your application inside a Docker container on your machine. Now, let's make use of your newfound Linux skills and get ready to deploy to the cloud.